Why, hello everyone. The stream is starting. Hi Pyro, hi Han and Ron. How's everyone doing tonight? That's good to hear. So, first things first. So this is my Archmage character from Krangled League here. I'm just going to go over what happened in Krangled League. So, I... Rushed for 90, uh, with some help, and, uh, right 30 minutes before the event ended, I was at 57% XP, and I died. And I just barely missed. I, I, I don't even know if I would have been able to get 90 in that time, but I just barely missed getting to 90, which is kind of sad. <laughs> But she's been punted out here now into uh, standard or into ancestors, so that's why she can't wear anything that she has anymore. So that's how my Krangle League ended. I have some videos coming up from Krangle League soon, and today we're going to be prepping for Shifting Stones, the event that's happening this Friday. And speaking of which, I should mention this. I'm going to be moving Thursday stream to Friday, and it will be half an hour earlier. So that will be Friday. Uh, that would be Friday, November 11th, 23, at 5 p.m. EST. I just, post, just typed into chat so you can read it. Uh, I'm going to be moving that because that's the exact time the event starts, and I'm going to be playing Shifting Stones from the very start. Uh, I started a bit late on a Saturday last time for Krangled, and I regretted it, so I'm going to try doing it the night of. And today, for this stream, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be making a build from scratch for Shifting Stones. I want to show you my process so that you kind of know... At least have an idea of how to do it yourself, because one of my greatest joys, if not my greatest joy in this game, is build crafting. I don't think I would enjoy Path of Exile if I did not build craft. I just genuinely do not think I would play the game at all. It is my love in the game, and we will be getting into Path of Building shortly. First of all, though, I have a bunch of div cards from Ancestors still that have the possibility of being really cool. I just wanted to. Uh, Go trade those in really quickly on stream, see if we get anything awesome. Or rest. I don't need the a half an elk. Almec Sanctum. The body. Polaris Lorica. And we have uh, three of the, uh, mi the miscellaneous currency ones. Blacksmith. Five mirror, five mirror, five mirror, five mirror. Oh. Five mirror. Oh. <laughs> okay, give me a Ventures Gamble. Nope, Highwayman. That is a perfectly rolled rarity on that Highwayman, too. Nice. Ring. Hello, sign. Nope. Bow. Narrow's Harp. Nope. Item. Honor home. Uh, <laughs> not good luck. Oh, an Alberon's Warpath with uh, movement speed. Pretty good. It max rolled increased strength and chaos resonant. Almost max roll. This is almost a perfect Alberon's. Wow. Uh, let me just check the stats on this. 
Oh, well, that's just... Oh, that's because this is Blast from the Past. Uh... Control, Shift, Space. And up. Pooey Ninja. Or Pew, uh, Awaken Pooey Trade. Back to Ancestor League. Try this again. So a perfect... Strength is not worth very much. With perfect chaos res, though, still not worth a huge amount. Whoever this person is who listed it for one chaos, I have no idea what's going on, right? <laughs> so start the build with using the Alberons. No, I already did a Alberons build, actually, recently. Or, like, a, a few leagues ago. I did, uh, I did, uh, Alberons with Iron Mass. I, don't, I assume I don't have an Iron Mass, but uh, they basically make skeletons do triple damage and have uh, Unholy Might to increase uh, their chaos damage, uh, which is really awesome. And then with this, they follow you. Though the, sum the summon skeletons cannot summon more than one skeleton warrior was not a thing that I had to deal with back then. So that is new. Surge binders. Well rolled surge binders too. And finally jewelry. Give me a calendar's touch. Cow reward, of course. Okay. That is enough for this character. What we are going to do now is we are going to swap over to Path of Building. Okay. So, I'm going to go through my build process from the start. First thing I do is I have a template here. The template, I think, is very valuable, at least for me. I, uh, I have the whole note section filled out with exactly when, uh, when you pick whatever your ascensions are. You get to... Uh, I can just label them right there, so it's really easy to write out the notes if I want to remember how to do something. Because just because I remember how to do a build this league does not mean that I remember how to do that same build two leagues from now. I automatically have a life flask and a mana flask in here, and I just have either a life or an energy shield belt. And I have my gems quality set to 20, plus I have groups set up for each of the uh, major equipment groups that you have. So, I'm going to copy the template, as I always do. So, technically, this is... So, I, I have a build in mind that I want to make. It's going to be... Flame Surge Totems. Slash. Righteous Fire. Oh, I can't do Slash. Flame Surge, Righteous Fire. Uh... I'll just name it my first hybrid build. Actually, do y'all have a good name for this? It's going to be a uh, Flame Surge Totem build with uh, Righteous Fire as a uh, secondary. Basically, the idea is Righteous Fire is going to be able to do enough damage to take out weak things, and it's going to make sure things are burning. And Flame Surge gains extra damage, like a lot of extra damage, when things are burning. So... Righteous Fire makes sure that things are always burning, and Flame Surge does, like, the real damage to beefy things. But it makes it so that I can actually run really fast, but when I need it, I can just pump out a bunch of damage. This will be my first time doing a hybrid build, which is using two specifically damaging skills and giving them, like, equal weight. Because I'm trying to build to both of them and not just have one to support the other. Because I do want to be able to run around really quickly with Righteous Fire and deal a bunch of damage. Flamey McFlamerson. Oh, boy. Is, is that really what we're going with? Uh, that, that really, that really how we're doing this? Okay. Unless someone comes up with a better, uh, 
Weekend at Burning Man. <laughs> is that is that a uh, reference to Weekend at Bernie's? That that would be really funny. Okay, Flemmy McBurning Man. That's pretty decent. Okay. Uh, assuming that I'm not confused, I believe Weekend at Bernie's was they were going on a road trip to Disneyland, just the fam, like our nuclear family, and they brought Grandma, and Grandma died like one third of the way there. And the father was so fed up that he's like, no, we're still going anyways. We'll just bring her dead body with us in the car. So she just, like, they just pretend that she's alive and, like, bring her places. It's, it's, it's not a very good movie, but it's just one of those, like, 90s things or that popped up that was memorable because it was insane. Okay. Uh, righteous Fire with Flame Surge Totems or Bossing. Okay, so first things first. I'm going to activate, we're going to pick up our new scale, whatever it's going to be. Uh, since I know that this, uh, yeah, it is a very 90s thing. <laughs> uh, I'm probably going to be picking a staff for this, is what I'm thinking. Because... I'm going to be setting the body armor as Combs Heart. So it has... You have no sockets. It gives you 50% increased fire damage at 500 plus life. So... My life pool is already going to be ridiculous, and I'm, I'm pretty confident I'll be able to get this in Shifting Stones. So the first thing that I do with every build, uh, usually I put it in the body, but I'm going to start off with the main skill. Righteous Fire. I'm going to include it in full DPS, because we're going to have multiple skills, so we're going to want to see all of it at once. Delete the offhand. There's the staff, and we're going to put the flame surge totems in here. So, want flame surge and spell totem support. And, okay, so let's read over this. So, flame surge strikes enemies in front of you with a surge of flame. Burning enemies are dealt more damage. If you hit an ignited enemy, will create burning ground underneath them. Your damage modifiers don't apply to this burning ground. You get 88% more damage with hits against burning enemies. For those who don't know, more and increased damage are separate. So increased cast speed is very easy to get. More cast speed multiplies after all your increased cast speed is added, for example. So in this case, 88% increased damage. Let's say you have 50% increased damage from this skill and 100% from your from your uh, tree. And then you get 25% more damage. Well, that will give you... What's 25% of that? Let's say you get 100% from both. 100% <laughs> increased damage from both. So that's 200% increased damage. So if you get more... That would effectively give you 25% more damage just on top of that. Because more is a multiplier versus increased... Or sorry, more is multiplicative instead of increase, which is additive. To name this. So a lot of Righteous Fire's damage, to the best of my knowledge, comes from your ability to sustain the life degen as well as how much life you have. 
So, I'm not going to, I'm only going to be giving it a four link here. I would love it if I could get a helmet that has something on it that will give me some sort of boost. But for now, we're just going to do as this. So, uh, at this point, you can't really, you can't really choose your, your support gems very well because the damage that you see is not going to be accurate because you have no items or skills, passive trees, passive tree skill points. You're going to, the, the gems that you will need for your build is going to change every time you make a change on your passive tree. So you have to make sure you revisit each part of your build constantly as you make big changes to it. Just for the start, uh, I don't know for sure. I don't know for sure if this affects your burning. I'm pretty sure you can still burn things because burning is not an ailment. Ignite is an ailment. If something is ignited, it's burning. If something is burning, it's not necessarily ignited. Make sense? Clear as mud? No? Okay, that's probably because the game is strange. <laughs> okay, burning damage. Just, just trust me on that one. And what else should I give it? Uh, I don't really want to give it concentrated effect, because I want to be able to actually like open to a wide range. I'll give it a conk effect for now. Okay, then Flame Surge Totems, I'm just going to give some random shit to it, because I'm not 100% sure what it's going to want. Oh, okay. Fire Penetration, uh, conk effect, Control Destruction, Faster Casting. Sure, let's go with that. Unfortunately, I have now ended up with two separate abilities that do not ignite things. <laughs> so I won't necessarily be able to use the burning round effectively. We'll we'll see how that works. I might have to pick up a third option for that. Okay, so now that we have some sort of something set up for our tree, I'm going to increase the count here because on average I find I have probably about five or six totems. So I'm going to put this to six because that is how many totems we're going to have. The spell some support gives us one totem. We have one totem by default. Uh, oh, shoot, I forgot the most important thing. Our penetration I'll put down there, because I need to add multiple totem support. Uh, and then I'll just get rid of control now. So multiple totem support gives you another maximum two to your totems. So... I can spawn three totems now, and it also summons two totems at once every time I use the skill. So, now to look at the passive tree. I have a few different ideas here. I am definitely hovering between using either Hierophant, Inquisitor, Chieftain, or Juggernaut right now. Juggernaut's really good for this in specific because it gives you a lot of regen, and regen is very, very valuable when you're dealing with this. Because as you can see right now, and on the left side here, our life regen is negative 1700. We are going to need to fix that. Part of that issue is that we have no elemental resistances, because your elemental resistances are going to matter a lot here. So we will work on that in a second. But for now, we have probably four different options that I would really consider to be particularly good. Uh, I would pick uh, potentially pick uh, Hierophant, because Hierophant has a bunch of totem stuff, so it is plus one to maximum totems here. And it also has damage percent per totem, regeneration per totem, and life regen per totem. All very good. Plus, there's also a more sm spell damage modifier on Arcane Surge. Great. And this gives you a lot of charges. Also great. Then again, there's Inquisitor, which benefits heavily from just elemental damage in general. And it can create Consecrated Ground, which is very effective at protecting you. And also regenerates your life very quickly, which is pretty important. This. 
Then we have the two different ascendancies that I'd be looking at for Marauder. So the first one and like the most obvious one is Chieftain, because Chieftain is a fire-based ascendancy. Let's look at what we have here. So we have uh, their totem scale. Recoup 25% of damage taken by your totems is life. Totems regenerate 1% per light per se regenerate one life per second per four of your life recovery per second from regeneration. Oh my god, that's confusing. You could just say tomes regenerate one quarter of the life of the life per second you regenerate. Thing. Anyways, they ta they taunt things as well. So that would benefit from our righteous fire because then the totems would also be regenerating. Uh, this is just two bonuses to fire jewels. These are to strike things. So. One of like the main benefits for going to Chieftain for Fire Build specifically is having Ramako's Sun's Light, which means that you deal increased damage over time while you're stationary. But this build is the opposite of stationary, so this is not really going to be that valuable. Finally, we have an on death explosion, which is always fun, but it's not it's not build defining. And here we have modifiers to fire resistance also apply to coal and lightning resistance at 50% of their value. So, basically you only build fire, and it gives you all the coal and lightning that you need. Modifiers to maximum fire resistance also apply to maximum coal and lightning resistance. That is very tempting, because one of my plans has been, if we go back to skills, is I want to throw... A purity of fire on this right here so purity of fire you and nearby enemies gain at nearby nearby allies gain four percent additional maximum fire res and 41 percent additional fire resistance so that'll bring me up to 79 percent of fire resistance which is very very valuable because the more max resistance you have the more effective uh the less regen that you're going to need for your Righteous Fire build. So that makes this very valuable. And if I can get plus the gem levels on this, once it gets to level 22, 23, it gets up to 5%, which is really good. So that is one idea. That would mean that everything, all it would be 41% to all resistances. No, that'd be 41% to fire. 20 to lightning, 20 to cold, and then 4% additional maximum fire, lightning, and cold res. Which would make this a very, very tanky character, that's for sure. There isn't a whole lot of damage, though. The so non-unique jewels cause increases and reductions to other damage types in a large radius to be transformed to apply to fire damage. Non-unique jewels cause small and notable passive skills in a large radius to also grant plus three to strength. I've never tried this before. So I don't actually know for sure if... It really helps if my headset does not turn off on me. So I don't know if this is going to be a good option or not. But it is something I want to consider, because this... This node is either extremely bad or extremely good. So I have to look into that. And then finally we have Juggernaut, which definitely has the regenerate and move very quickly kind of style to it. So Unstoppable is the node that people know Juggernaut for. Basically, you can't be stunned, and your movement speed and action speed cannot be go below, below base value, which means that stun, chill, and freeze do not affect you. Stun, chill, freeze, maim, hinder, anything else? And yeah, none of those affect you. So that's really good. Uh, so this, the main benefits of, of Juggernaut is that you build endurance charges. So we have unflinching here, which just gives you more endurance charges. Up here we have more damage in AoE per endurance charge, which would certainly benefit us when we're doing Flame Surge totems, and for Righteous Fire. 
a check. Uh... Oh, so you gain endurance charges if you've been hit recently or you hit something. Okay. You also have the chance to 1% uh, additional physical damage reduction per endurance charge, 4% chaos resistance per endurance charge, and 8% reduced elemental damage taken while at maximum endurance charge. Which would be very, very good when you're dealing with Righteous Fire and its degen. We also have armor applying to some of the Fire, Cold, and Lightning damage taken, so that would reduce the amount of that being, well, taken. And we have just a flat life regen node, which is, sounds amazing. Forty percent increased life regeneration rate. So, life regeneration rate is a stat that does not come up very often. Rate specifically is rare. There's one node that I know that definitely has it, which is Hardy over here. I know it has an increased life regeneration rate. Uh, the rest of it's all just regenerate li like a certain amount of life. It's very rare to find more regeneration, right? There might be some over here. Nope. Nope, none of this. Nope, none of... Okay. <laughs> Sometimes there is, but... No. There's no... Uh, there's not very much life regeneration, right, specifically, which is... Which makes this incredibly valuable, because this just flat increases all of your... Your flat, oh, just flat increases all of your regeneration, which is amazing. Because if you have, let's say, let's say you manage to get a thousand life regeneration a second, that just brings up to fourteen hundred for free. That's amazing. Plus, there's also physical damage prevented from hits, uh, gets regenerated as life, which is not something I would count on for anything, but it's there. I'm really leaning towards Juggernaut. It sounds really fun. It's the one that has the best defenses, and it feels like it's the most effective for what I want it to be. It is not going to be... It's not. I'm not going to get really any buffs except for Unyielding here to my Flame Surge from my Ascendancy, which would hurt a lot. But... It's hard to say whether I'm going to need it or not. And then again, there's also this attempting to. I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to pick Marauder, and I'm going to try Chieftain. Just because I don't really know how the uh, jewels cause increases and reductions to other damage types in a larger radius to be transformed to apply to fire damage. Don't know how that would actually work in practice, so I'm going to pick that. I'm going to pick up the Fire Res modifier and the Max Fire Res modifier. And I'm going to pick up the Totem modifier. Flames Advance does work on Timeless pass timeless Jewels modified passes, but it only tends to work around Scion starting area. Okay. No. So I'm just going to pick up some just random nodes right here that seem to be somewhat decent. Uh, one of the first things I do when I start putting picking things up on the tree is I just try to pick everything that looks good. I don't really worry about whether I go over up to like 140 points. Uh, I just grab whatever seems good. Let's see. I have some life regen over here. Lots of weapon stuff there. I think, since there's lots of fire stuff over there, the max res stuff over here, too. A lot of good stuff. I think I'll go up here first. I'm going to step over here, grab the life. I'm going to grab the fire damage over time. Grab more life. Path up here. I have divine judgment. Grab Divine Fury for more fire damage. Got to pick up the Jewel Socket. That's going to be valuable soon. Grab Endurance Charge. 
Grab more life. Always grab more life. You need it. Grab more life. Some more fire stuff up here. Grab that. And while we're here, I'm going to really quickly grab some mastery. So we are definitely going to have life modifiers on our body, so that's not relevant. I'm going to pick 50 life just because it's a safe and easy thing to pick. For our elemental resist, for elemental mastery, I don't know if there's actually a real point right now. I'm going to skip on that for a moment. I want to pick up some fire damage stuff, though, specifically. I'll start on this one, because I'll get this one first. Fire exposure applies an extra negative 5% to fire res, conversion, explosion, and there. Chance to refresh ignite duration. Critical strikes do not inherently ignite. Increase damage against ignited enemies. This is actually really powerful if you can get to work. And this is what I'm most interested in because the uncapped... Regenerate one life per second for each 1% uncapped fire res. Because we're going to have a lot of fire res, so that'll be good. Okay, I'm going to start going this way. Grab the regen node abso fucking lootly. Grab the flat regen here, absolutely. Grab more life. Grab more endurance charges. Grab jewel socket. Simple max life here with armor, always good. We no longer have a way of like specifically getting uh, endurance charges, so I'm going to pick up exonerable. Gain an endurance charge when you're hit. Straight up, really, really good option. Grab more life over here. And we're going to skip through here. We are going to pick up Soul of Steel, which gives increased maximum resistances, bringing us up to 81 fire res. Uh, we also got a, a mat plus one max fire res here, too. And we are going to move up this way here. And we are going to get some more max resistances. So max fire res there. So we are now up to 84% fire res. I don't actually know how much life regen we have, but we're our, our degen's almost gone now. What's this? Generate more on low life. I don't really want a low life regeneration thing because I don't really trust that since we're not always going to be on low life. Fire. With attack skills. I'm not using attack skills. Okay, that's not useful. The next pick up here, I'm going to grab Call to Arms because I'm going to be using War Cries, probably. Not enemies take 8% increase more damage. Increased damage, not more damage. I'm going to pick up Natural Authority because I'm going to have... My totems will naturally taunt things due to uh, Moon's presence here. Totems taunt enemies for four seconds when they're summoned. Let's see, is there anything useful here? I don't have 10 power. That's pretty useful in case there's not nothing around you when it activates. Also, there's lots of fire stuff here. Oh, this is all attack fire, isn't it? Nearby enemies are covered in ash. You haven't moved in the past two seconds. That's not likely us. This would be really good for attack skills, but not for us. So we're going to start heading back up the tree, because we're most likely going to be focusing going upwards, since a lot of the fire damage stuff is up. So we have more fire damage and cast speed AoE here. Okay, picking that up. Let's see, fire damage. Gonna walk over here, gonna grab Breath of Flames. Ignite, Ignite, don't want that. We want the fire dot multi. And we're just gonna grab Heart of Flames as another option. I think that's most of the stuff we really need badly. More life right here. We're going to pick that up. And something I realized recently that is super valuable 
is I'm going to take this this mana node right here because you can just get mana reservation efficiency on that, and fours are always good. Okay, so got most of our shit together now. We still have some degen issues, but I'm not too concerned about that yet. Oh, we're already at 5,100 life, and we don't have any gear on at all. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. Okay, so now let's fuck around with that... Uh, with uh, the uh, Flames Advance. I want to see what we can make out of that. Okay, just give me some Cobalt Jewels. See what it does. Okay, so that added, that added a jewel there. They have to be just non-unique, I think. I don't think there's anything else. It is non-unique, okay. So just other damage types. I don't know how big a range this is, though. Don't really know how to use this. <laughs> uh, that should be converted to fire, shouldn't it? Maybe it's only small. Maybe it's only like the small area that counts. That would not make it very good, though, then. It's just a small area. Unique jewels cause small and noble clusters in a large radius to also grant plus three strength. Okay, you're... Oh, yeah, large radius. Okay, you're right. So it is the blue one. The big circle. Uh... I don't know if this is properly implemented yet because I'm not seeing the increases here. Because this is just, I mean, there's just lightning and physical right here. And that should be converted to strength. Or not strength, to um, uh, fire. I'm curious. So that's 3,000 right now. If I take this out, zero. Okay, so now it actually, so it thinks this stuff is, is fire. But it doesn't show anything to suggest that. Okay, so I'm going to grab uh, this here. Okay, so I see plus three strength if you allocate this node. So that means so this is actually working. It just doesn't show it. Damage. It's all how much damage. All damage. Full damage gives some, which I assume just because it's just fire damage. Really frustrating not knowing. I do wish I could see what I was doing. Okay, so... Reread this. Unique jewels cause increased reductions to other damage types in a large radius to be transformed to apply to fire damage. So this is just like flat increased or more damage. This doesn't include things where like, oh, this is physical damage with maces or scepters, and it's now fire damage with maces or scepters. No, it has to be like specifically fire. Or specifically a just flat damage type. Uh, okay. Increased minion damage doesn't seem to do anything. Melee damage doesn't seem to convert. What does this actually work on? <laughs> uh... 
Uh, this probably works in a way that I'm just not understanding, but as far as I can tell right now, it's doing nothing. In most scenarios. Okay, so this should be 10% increased damage. Okay, maybe it's only elemental damage types? Doesn't say that. Increase and reduction to other damage types. Is minion not a damage type? This is starting to... This is causing some issues. I don't know if I'm going to be able to actually use this, unfortunately. It doesn't... Either it doesn't do what it says on the tin, or... It's just... I'm just not finding good places to put it, either. That's flat strength. So I know some of it's activating, because like, I see the, the plus three strength on the notables. What about here? Physical damage with axes. Axes. I know these are like specifically just like increased physical damage. They're all, all like increased with a weapon. That's not useful. I don't think that there's anything. I'm not seeing. I don't really see how to use this, I'll be honest. As far as I can tell, none of these are useful. Yeah, the the three extra strength that it's giving me on every notable that's in the radius is not enough to be to bother with that. Until I can figure out how to use this effectively, I'm just going to uh Yeah, strength stacking builds would love it, that's true. Looks like we're going to be taking the uh, on-death explosions. I don't really have any other option, I don't think. Because this doesn't seem to be... Okay, so how many endurance charges do I even have at the moment? Five, okay. So I'll be able to get endurance charges through exonerable. That'll help. So five is a lot to generate just from that. Oh, I need to make sure that things are set as taunted. Because of the ascendancy. Taunted has not come up. Oh, enemies on hit. Okay, so it recognizes that, but it does not do it. Uh, hmm. I'm trying to think of how to activate taunt. I have an idea. War cry. I'm just going to pick a war cry. Configuration. I'm still not seeing taunt here, interestingly enough. Everything's going to be burning. That's guaranteed. I feel like I maybe should be adding more options to generate endurance charges, because like, I'll be getting hit fairly often, but I want to make sure that it's enough to keep my endurance charges up. So, making me think that what I need here is, is Enduring Cry. 
It will also give me increased phys uh, element resistances and physical damage reduction when it's active, plus more regen. Okay, auras. I can add more auras later. This is already a fair bit of already a fair bit of progress here on the tree, so I'm going to swap back now the items because we have no items. So that's not very useful, is it? Okay, what should we pick? Sell this. Okay. What would be good for fire? I know there's a fire damage helm. Specifically, but not heat shiver. Oh, well, there's also Formless Inferno, but that comes from Zoff, and I want to do this in Shifting Stones, ideally, so. Oh, each of is cold damage as fire, not fire damage as cold. Terminator's Resolve, this is what I was looking for. Not be frozen or chilled if you used a fire skill recently. Gold res... Max life, fire damage. Sounds good. Hmm. So we have lots of life now. Lots of damage in general. We need a weapon. And it needs to be a six link weapon, so it has to be probably a staff, realistically. Staff. I think I can do full DPS now, so it'll automatically calculate it. I would love Annihilating Light, but can't afford that. Oh, Martyr of Innocence is fairly good, but also that's probably going to be really expensive. Oh, Searing Touch, that's probably going to be reasonable. Close the Grace Fire. I'm going to pick up Steering Touch, just because I think it's fairly likely to be able to get one. If you're not set on using life, you could use ES instead, with use like Joffrey Sanctuary and Touch. Oh, that's true. Never, I've never actually considered doing a Energy Shield build Righteous Fire. That's interesting. I'm going to grab the Scorching Boots. Oh, shoot. Okay, Legacy of Fury is really good for this. Unfortunately, uh, again, this is going to be a, a, a for a temporary league, so that's probably not going to work. I want to get things that are actually reasonable to pick up right now, like during the early league. I can't. Nope, that's from that's from Uber Elder. <laughs> There's so many good options that I just have absolutely no chance of being able to use. Let's look at armor first. If you just use sort by full DPS, it'll help you figure out what you want. Life. Yes. You see, Fury can't use. I don't. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to stick myself into a situation where I need something that can't easily be acquired. I don't really need crit multi. There's repentance. That requires a lot of int.
Pray for the Serpent. Life lead. I want to make sure I get some, like, real nice spell damage stuff, because I currently don't have a huge amount of spell damage reasons. Oh, shoot. I just realized something. So I'm going to have a bit of an issue with uh, doing totems in this. Uh... Okay, well, I can get more Totem Life through Torch Oak Step. At least that's a fairly easy thing to get. One of the, like, the best ways to get a... to get extra Totems is to use a shield. And if I'm using a staff, that's not going to work, which makes me think that I might actually just need to dump the Comb's Heart and switch it to something else. That would actually open up a lot more options for me. Wow, that took out so much of my life. Okay, let's look at one-handed melee. Because I'm going to move this stuff to the body. Okay, right, main hand. Offhand one now, because I'm the not use and a thing anymore. Because honestly, I would really prefer they use uh, a uh, I prefer to dual wield. It just tends to be better, I find, for this and easier to find a gear. Singularity as usual. Singularity actually might pick actually might be a decent pick because. Things are going to be near me because of righteous fire. So, Oriana Catalyst is another good pickup, but at Ziri is. I don't necessarily want to rely on them on people to be able to kill at Ziri. I'm gonna pick up on Singularity since Singularity is usually pick. That's first spent two nineteen. And now, since we are using a main hand and an off hand, there is a shield which gives me. That's an endurance one, but I don't think that's what I want. It is a fire damage shield. Or not fire damage. Well, actually, that is a fire damage shield. There's a particular shield I'm looking for. I don't want to consider it the Phoenix one. But not Invictus Solaris. Oh, Rise of the Phoenix, here it is. Because if I did this, well, it wouldn't decrease my damage, it would bring up to me up to 89% resistance for everything, which would be crazy. But, thinking, of, thinking of it through a bit more now, the only way... Uh, I'll just pick a simple... The only way that I'm going to be able to get six totems instead of five is to have a shaper modified here. I'm going to try to go for maximum totems. I'm also going to try to go for, where is it? Shock attackers for a few seconds on block. Is 
going to be another good option. Because Strock tends to give a fairly big benefit. Oh, I don't even need any resistances. That's a weird feeling. I guess I need Chaos Res. Okay, I'll add some Chaos Res. All that good. Add a basic shield to the build. Okay, now I should be able to have six. Wait, do I have Ancestral Bond? No. Okay, so I should be able to have six totems now. One base, plus two from multiple totems for three. Four from Ancestral Bond. Five from the shield. Oh, right, I'm not using Hierophant, so it is only five, not six. It would have been four, actually. That's not good. Okay, so five totems. Oh, wait! If we pick Ancestral Bond, then I can't use Righteous Fire, either. Which brings us down to four totems. Ooh. That's kind of punishing. Hmm. Well, that's something to think about. Because I guess... Yeah, I guess totems and self-casting don't really mesh that well, so it does make some sense. And I'm going to want, like, totem damage and stuff as well. I have a degen of seven. <laughs> well, at least I'm very, very strong and durable. That's good. Hmm. So as long as I stay chieftain... I won't be able to do... I won't be able to get the extra totem from Two to Faith. So that will always leave me at 5. And without and being the fact that I want to be able to deal damage with Righteous Fire, uh, it's extra bond is useless, which brings me down to 4. And 4 totems is a lot harder to work with than just than 6. That's a lot less damage. Other option is I could self-cast. So I kind of want the benefit of having a bunch of totems wandering around. Actually, Runebinder. Hold on, I could go Brand instead. I could swap out or. Arcanist brand. I think that's the right one. Uh, I don't even know what brand skills usually use. Swift brand. More activation frequency. I don't mind activating and reactivating it. That's fine. Okay, Swift Brand there. Okay, so now I have Brand skills. That's going to be interesting. Okay, so the Dot DPS is coming from the Fire and the Flame Surge. That's very low damage. I need... Yeah. Yeah, I could use them as my main single target damage, but I, it's. I have to. I think I have to decide here whether I'm going to 
go totems and not do righteous fire or if i'm going to go righteous fire and add something else with it somehow because if we're at the point where we're just doing flame surge with arcanist brand would it not just be better to skip all that shit and just do uh, armageddon brand instead which is one gem instead of two Plus, well, I have to pick up some brand stuff, too. And this sensei has nothing for brands, either. Another problem. Cast two additional brands. There's also a brand... I know there's a brand skill thing somewhere here that lets you apply multiple brands. Oh, that's just Rune Binder. But most... If I apply Rune Binder, I could have two. I'm not really liking this, I admit. Feels like it's flopping. <laughs> I think I'm going to go with what I interpret to be what you're suggesting. Oh, uh, no, not Shadow. Templar. Air font. Time to make a totem build. Ear totem build. Attack damage. Yeah, I don't need additional. Don't need a ton of additional endurance charges anymore, because the only way. Because I'm not going to be getting it. I'm going to have endurance charges naturally. Because I'll be having minimum endurance charges. So I don't need to have extras. Nor do I need to have any extra power charges. What else is going on here? Uh, not going to need to push this as much. So I'm going to pull that off. And I'm not going to go war cry. So I'm just going to cut off this whole bottom part of the tree here. Okay, I think I'm going to go this way. Grab some life. Going to run over here. Take this out. It'll give me more dex, but I don't really need it. I need more strength. I can get that elsewhere, though. So where does this leave me? Oh yeah, I still have a lot of fire res because I still have purity of fire active. But I'm not doing that anymore. Okay. Fire. Goodbye. Okay, pure totem build. And since this is pure totem build, I can pick rune binder, or so I can pick a central bond, and I can pick pursuit of faith, so I now have six totems. Okay, I now have quadruple the damage I had a moment ago. <laughs> Really wanted to do like a mixed build, but I think I need a self cast flame surge to do that. Just not going to work the way I want it to.
I suddenly have a lot of extra points now. Pick up some Shaman's Dominion. Five percent of damage from hits taken from your nearest totem's life. Sure. Critical strike chance. You've summoned a totem recently. Sure. Here. I want to put the masteries in order of which one I would go see first. Now I have way too many things here. Take that off. And I'm going to also add some explosions. That's fun, and it's totally worth a normal skill points, but not necessarily an ascendancy point. I don't need a pump regen like I was, but having a bit of regen, I'll leave that. Okay, so I need some spell damage. I also need to set it so that I have Arcane Surge. Because that's important. You have a totem summoned. Yes. Summoned a totem recently. Yes. You have Consecrated Ground. Oh. You hit recently. Hit with a spell recently, no. Totems hit recently, yes. Totems hit with a spell recently, yes. Okay, things will be burning. Uh, things will be hindered because they'll be nearby. Now I have a better concept of what's going on. I'm going to glance at the totem things again, now that I have changed my build a bit. I mean, soul mantle's good. More totem life, totem spell damage, and spell totem support on it. Looks a random curse on you, or hex on you when your totems die, that's not really a big deal. So add soul mantle. Hope a six link soul mantle is not going to be too hard to get. Immolate, add fire and burning enemies. This does set things on fire, right? It can tell, please tell me this can burn things. It's on Ignite Enemies Create Burning Ground. Okay, so I think the way that it burns things is it makes sure they're ignited so that... Makes things, uh, make sure, it makes th sure things are ignited so that burning ground can make them burning. That's a different problem that I have to deal with, is I have to somehow make sure they are burning. And this skill cannot ignite. So, I need something else separate to ignite them. Well, here's an idea. Uh, don't you hate it when you have a great idea and then it disappears instantly? Herald of Ash, Herald of Ash, that's what it was. Okay. That's a buff providing fire damage, based on your physical damage. When you have this buff, if you kill an enemy, other enemies near them will be burned based on the overkill damage. The burn inflicted by this skill can only be affected by modifiers of damage over time. So, this will cause burning damage if I kill something. That is good. 
but it doesn't deal with bossing because unless there's ads like additional mobs nearby then I have no way of triggering this. Yeah, writhing jar. I don't think there's an easier way than writhing jar, because, I don't know, I find writhing jar annoying. Oh, actually, hold on a second. If... Okay, writhing jar. Grab this. I guess what I could do is I could just you when you hit a rare unique enemy, use it. So that means I'm not gonna be wasting it. I need some flask charge regen, I think. Because I want to make sure I can have this up regularly. I'm going to be using it. So there's some flask charge over here. I can grab life flask gain one charge every three seconds. Mana flask gain one charge every three seconds. Which means, hopefully, that it gains two charges, because it's a... Yes, it gains two charges. Okay, because this is a hybrid flask, so it's a mana flask and a health flask. Okay, so 2.5 second. Which means that... Four and a half for two... Two seconds... Nine for three, four seconds. Seconds, 18 for eight seconds. So every eight seconds, it will be able to writhing jar based on that. My math is right. That's more than good enough. Because if I'm mapping, I'm going to have burning stuff around me anyways. I'm not too concerned about that. I'm just thinking about Ignite Proliferation right now. Oh, actually, there's another really, really effective way of doing this. Armageddon Brand. Ignite Proliferation. Uh, Bustion support. No. There's a there used to be curse on hit. Does that not exist anymore? That curse on hit was a thing still. Oh, this is all the curse stuff. Did they remove curse on hit? Weird. So that was going to do curse on hit flammability. And then that's... Then you could just attach a brand to it. Oh, hex touch. Right, because they changed curse on hit to hex touch because they changed curses to hexes and marks. Okay. Thank you. Okay, flammability specifically because it increases the ignite chance. Okay, so if we go under Kelk here, we're going to go down to our boots where our brand is. And we should be able to see our ignite chance here. Oh. Right. We have... <laughs> We still have Ancestor Bond! <laughs> Which means we can't use that! 
<sighs> so, next question. Can Harold of Ash even burn things? I don't know if Harold Ash can burn things if I have Ancestral Bond on. That's a slight... That's a problem. Okay, well, I'm going to go under Calc here, and I'm going to check Aura's Herald of Ash. Yeah, I don't know for sure if it can burn things if... I have found a pickle. I have pickled myself. <laughs> hmm. Option three, I make a totem. <laughs> I make a totem that burns things. And then just use my flame search totems normally and then just swap between it. Oh my gosh, Searing Bond! Searing Bond! Holy shit, I forgot about that. Because that adds plus one to maximum summoned totems. Deals burning damage to enemies caught in the beam. Enemies near either end of the beam also suffer burning damage. I don't know how it would be to manipulate Searing Bond, but it would probably work. Okay, if I can use Searing Bond, then that would make this more usable. So here's the part in the build where I have no fucking idea how this will go, because I'm not too familiar with using Searing Bond. So, here's the solution. Standard mode. Pick a random character. Oh, this must... I must have had a uh, reset. A skill reset. Because nothing's working anymore. Makes sense. It's a minion build. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about, is the, the probably of that. Uh, let's pick a build that's a little bit more functional. That nation still should be functional and is a totem build. Right. It is a totem build. Danite dead. I think it's partially totem because it should have a... Earth was this bit. Yeah, I'm using Phantasmal on Earth. The de detonate dead. Okay. Billy. Is my searing bond? Okay, so I'm going to grab searing bond there. And I'm going to go to... Where should I go? Oh, Brian King Reef is annoying. I'm going to go to the Reliquary. I like testing the Reliquary for some reason. Okay, so how does Searing Bond work? Let's find out. I'm going to put that there. How far away does something have to be? get the buff, so, or the debuff. So, things are burning here still. Okay, 
Okay, so if I I'm gonna pick one of these creatures. Uh, let's pick this Vengeful Soul here. I'm going to... Nope, not that one. Okay, I'll pick this gold one then. I'm going to put that here. I'm going to make him burn. I'm going to make him burn. Did I not set him on fire? What is this? Clear ground, explodes corpses, ambushes far shots. Is he sell? Uh, let me find a character that's easier to see what the fuck is going on. Okay, so that one just got burning damaged. Doesn't last very long. What I'm noticing. Like I can set a lot of things on fire, but they do not stay on fire. That is one slight problem. Hmm. Okay, so here's my next idea. I'm going to add increased duration to Searing Bond. Duration. Oh, increased duration does not work on it. So I can't make things burn longer. Ah. Interesting. Oh man, this is like stupid valuable. This is a uh, pre nerf uh, Shroud of the Lightless. But it still had elemental penetration and shade form on it. This is like stupid, stupid valuable, especially considering it has a really good corruption on it, too. <laughs> uh. And we're going to use this to test a level 1 Searing Bond. I'm sorry, Shroud. You deserved better than that. Was that multiple prol proliferation? Searing Bond can't use it. Surprised me too much. Flush and support. Bond can. Wait. Searing Bond say what it can use. Modify spell damage, apply this skill's damage over time. I don't want spell damage though. Yeah, I'm worried that, that's, that they only will burn when they're touching it. Uh, okay, different, different question. Area effect? God damn it, that doesn't work either. Efficacy? Okay, efficacy works. I don't know if the skill duration is going the skill effect duration will do anything. Okay, if it's doing something, it's not changing the length of the to the totem duration. Okay, I'm gonna put put that there. Where they are. Oh yeah, the burning lasts like all of four seconds. Actually, okay, next question. Torchoke step. Does that burn things? Tomes reflect 25% of their maximum life as fire damage on nearby enemies when hit. As in it's a hit? Okay. 
Next, next question. Second. Okay, torch oak step. I have innocence combined with uh, with totems that can ignite will cause all hits with totems to trigger the area effect damage. Totems release an area effect damage centered around the totem each time they are hit by any source. There's no cooldown for the area effect damage. Not what I'm looking for. Yeah, because reflected damage is different. We're definitely right, though. Can reflected damage ignite? <sighs> reflected damage. No, that's not the same thing. Oh. Flex is a mechanic that causes an effect to act on its source in addition to its target. When damage... Damage is the... What? While damage is the effect most commonly reflected, curses and ailments can be reflected too. Do the nature of character damage scaling being much higher than that of monsters, most characters will die instantly upon taking any amount of reflected damage. Uh, not really useful. I, I'm, I'm really starting to lean towards it will not work. <laughs> Infernal Cry. Can you ignite things? <laughs> Exert attacks trigger combust the first time they deal a melee hit. Well, I'm not going to be using melee. Yeah, I think I think this would only be useful for cover Nash. Okay, so I might want Infernal Cry for cover Nash, but that's still not what I'm looking for. Well, I need a decent way. Oh wow, I just had a really stupid idea. That's a really stupid idea. It is great how stupid that idea is. Okay, so I have a seer I have a spell a spell totem support. And now <laughs> I need a righteous fire gem. Oh, does something need to be near it for it to work? <laughs> uh, cascade. I want those. I want increased area of effect. Well, I can't use righteous fire, but nothing says a totem can't use righteous fire. <laughs> Scorching ray is also an option. Okay, that's fair. I guess that would require me to channel it, but I guess that doesn't really matter now, does it? Oh. Oh, that's actually really cool looking. Is he Danig? That's fun. Oh, can I only use one? Oh, I need multiple totem support active. Uh, I need a red, red, blue. Would be my helmet currently. Or multi spell. Okay, so spell support, righteous fire, three stay AoE, multiple totem support.
Okay, so cool. I can actually have multiple. Oh, wow. That's actually really kind of cool. Oh. Okay, visually, this looks awesome. Do a lot of damage, but I mean, that's fine. It doesn't need to do a lot of damage. The Flame Surge is going to do a lot of damage. And then I, if I want to pop a bunch down on top of this thing. Cool. That's pretty good for having no damage with it, either. Like, I have no totem damage on my on my tree. So this is just Righteous Fire with increased area, which actually reduces the damage, because I'm using a uh, anomalous one. Spell totem support, which reduces the damage, and multiple totem support, which reduces the damage. But because totems have just so much damage... Okay, so I'm going to increase their damage with Torcho here. Nation, Herald of Ash, Grace. My stuff back on. This is what Torchoke Step looks like, so it just fits out a bit of extra damage. Where's. Oh, there's a rare right here. Perfect. Okay, cool. Now, let's see what happens when it's reflecting damage. It's not very notable right now, but I also don't have any totem damage. And also, this is life regen. Huh, that's interesting. And, like, the totem duration doesn't even matter because it just the totem's eating itself anyways. Here, let's put three up there. Okay. This is actually really cool looking. Like, like this is really cool looking. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, I think I might use this in addition to the flame surge. So, there's another problem. I need to find another rare. Also not have a bunch of shit. Give me a rare. Give me a rare monster. Stuck here by skeleton. Rare monster. Can I use you, maybe? I want to see, when the totem runs out, how long does it burn for? Okay, so it stops instantly. Okay, that is a problem, though. Because, unlike Searing Bond, which has a plus one native to it, to maximum totems, this doesn't. So, it'll be very easy for me to accidentally overwrite it with... Uh, more flame surge totems. And as soon as I overwrite it, it goes like it stops functioning. Let me read spell totem support. Okay. Stupid idea number 60. Go back to my hideout. I'm going to get an Armageddon brand. Armageddon brand, okay. Okay, I'm going... I've made a totem. Wait, why... Oh, not enough mana. 
and while it wasn't working. There. Okay, I have now made a totem that makes a brand. Which is stupid. But. Whoa, okay, I didn't realize that Armageddon brand was so flashy. Okay, but it's still the brand still stays on it and keeps affecting it after it's gone. Which means I can have a totem casting Armageddon brand. And the Armageddon brand can be igniting things. It also means I don't need multiple totem support on it because I don't like I can only attach one brand natively. Over here. But it just keeps applying more and more brands until the totem runs out and then the brand starts runs its course. So it actually lasts a very long time and it lingers after the totem goes away which is probably the most important aspect. Because our problem with Searing Bond and our problem with a Righteous Fire Totem is that they go away as soon as they get overwritten by a different totem. If these totems get overwritten, I'm still going to have... How many seconds? Where's our again brand? I'm still going to have five attached seconds for the Armageddon brand after that, before it runs out. And that assumes I don't add increased duration. I think did something. That, yep, yeah, that, that triggered. I take off spell support, spell totem support for a second. Oh, it doesn't show me the duration. Uh, duration, duration, duration. 29% chance to ignite. What is the brand duration? Skill duration, plus 74%. So that is actually working, but doesn't tell me how long it lasts. Not incredibly useful, I admit. But it does prove the point that what I can do is I can... Okay, Armageddon brand, spell totem support, combustion, ignite proliferation. Uh, okay, Armageddon brand, Bell totem support, ignite proliferation. Wait, can I also can I do ignite proliferation and elemental proliferation at once? Ooh, 38% chance to shock, 38% chance to ignite, no freeze chance, there, oh, because there's no cold damage, if I had some cold damage, I could actually have a chance to free this, which would be kind of cool. This adds more damage to the ignite. I don't need more damage to the ignite. I actually, actually, ignite or elemental proliferation is better than ignite proliferation for me. Uh, and then I guess combustion would be the best thing to make sure I'm getting ignite because that gives me a twenty-five percent chance to ignite. So that brings it a fifty-seven percent chance, and then I just need to buff my ignite chance on here, so 
Let me just get rid of that. That gives that gave me twenty percent more, so that's seventy three now. And you grab that too, which will bring that up to eighty eight percent now. And with Holy Dominion here, that brings it up to 98, which, as far as I'm concerned, is more than enough. So, or 92, apparently, for whatever reason. So I have a 92% chance to ignite now with Armageddon Brand. So, once things are ignited, then they will burn. Okay. Okay. This is really convoluted and stupid, but I have... Okay, to get burning, I have a totem... That summons a brand that ignites, and ignites burn, and the ignites proliferate, which cause burning to everything. That's so roundabout, but it's really, it's gonna work. Okay. So, the next question is what we're gonna do for our auras. I don't, actually, I shouldn't have just gotten rid of that. Did Lash do anything? It does do something, because it does give you spell damage and increased fire damage, even though the on-kill stuff won't work. So let's check out Anger. Zealotry. And Termination. And what else? What other auras would be good? I'm just piling auras on right now. Like I'm not gonna be. Able, I'm not gonna use all of them, but I'm just piling them on because that makes the most sense. Gitter bots probably isn't worth it. Okay, so Herald of Ash seventy-eight thousand, eighty-nine thousand, ninety-five thousand. Okay, between zealotry and anger, zealotry is better. Uh, by comparison, it actually would be better for me to use Herald of Ash than Zealotry, because Zealotry does more damage, but Herald of Ash reserves half the mana. Other option. An Enlightened Support, but we're not going to have an Enlightened Support. I guess I can just try to grab some stuff from the tree. Let's try this. Oh, okay, that fixed it right there. So I'm going to be able to use Herald of Ash, Zealotry, and Determination. Uh, does anyone know if the uh, Consecrated Ground that you create uh, works with totems on hitting a rare or unique enemy? I think it does because totems inherit your abilities and like your on-hit stuff. I'm pretty sure that does work. Also, while I'm here, Define Spanner? Maybe? I don't know. I can't use Define Spanner. That's too much. <laughs> well, if I get more reservation efficient, I always have that. Aw. <laughs> Thank you, Pyro. I'm, I'm glad to... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. It it's it's okay. You don't have to know all that shit. Wait, why is spell totem unchecked? Oh, right, because I get spell totem through full mantle. Right. Okay. So this does not actually do anything except for give me ignite chain. Uh, I'm gonna axe that then. Four points for twenty percent ignite chance is not enough. To justify it. I could get ignite chance other ways. Uh, that gives me dot. Don't want that. Oh, I can get pick up ignite chance right there. That'll work just fine. I can give myself some more power charges, which would be good. I mean, it certainly doesn't hurt to have power charges. 
give me more crit multi, more critical strike chance, more mana regen, and more spell damage. Right there. Oh. No. That way. Okay, Herald. I do have a Herald, but I'm getting buffs for that. Rams. Okay, I'm going to be using a shield, so I can pick up some shield nodes that I want. Oh, I need some crit nodes too, definitely. It's 46,000 for four, and this is 90,000 for three, so this is not worth it by comparison. This does not feel like an optimal method to path, but I don't see a better option. Okay. Well, okay, so I have flames I have my flame surge totems on my body right now. I have my auras in the gloves. I can put the auras in the helmet. Just because it that's just something I do, it's just a quirk. I like putting auras in my helmet, I don't know why. Uh I should specify as well, the reason why I'm not getting rid of Defiance Banner or Anger, like why I'm not just removing the gems, is because there's always a chance later on that one, that one thing will become better than the other to have. So I want to be able to go back and be like, well, is Anger st there still worse than Zealotry? According to this, it actually isn't, but if Zealotry creates Consecrated Ground, Consecrated Ground's better. So that's not a non-contest. So I still have lots and lots of places to put things. I branded my boots. That's good. That is a pure red. That was pure red, and my boots are pure red. I think most of my gems are red. Uh, I might move my... Okay, I'm going to move my brand to my gloves instead, because I don't want to try to get three blues on a red base. That sounds awful. Ignite brand, just so I remember what that does. It leaves a few different things. I still have room to put stuff. Main hand, I'm going to make a travel thing here. Flame Dash. Faster casting. I probably actually could use Flame Dash too to cause burning. Because that does cause burning ground as well. But, no, I'm good. Uh, that ca okay, so there's a few other options then. I want to add Molten Shell to this list. No. A molten shell. Uncheck the valve side because I'm not going to be using it all the time. Our molten shell, I'll just trigger regularly, so that'll be that'll be useful. I'll have offhand and boots to put things in. I have I've used most of my mana efficiency, so I'll leave those gems. Actually, no, I know exactly what I need. I need to cast one stun gem here. Just in case something goes horribly wrong. What should I cast when stunned? Um, hmm. What would be useful to me? Oh, I still don't have a curse! I forgot about that! Okay, hold on a second. In that case, I'm going to move Molten Shell. Wait, what am I doing? Wrong spot. Ball Molten Shell. Put you there.
going to put flammability here, which will also give me 25% increased chance to ignite. So that's another thing I have. Oh, I'm almost at a million DPS. Good. Glad that it's starting to go up now. So I do want to put something on Casman's stun. I'm not sure what. Something that I kind of like to do sometimes is just I'll just do this as an example. Uh, I'll put like Vol Molten Shell on Caspian Stunned, and the cool thing about that is Caspian Stunned will use the normal Molten Shell, but it can't use the Vol Molten Shell. So you can still activate the Vol Molten Shell whenever you want, but and then the uh, other ones automated. So technically, you have like two buffs in in just one gem by like like one an automated one and one that is not automated. Which is really kind of nice, honestly. That is another thing I can do. Kind of tempting, but I do like having it just... No, actually, you know what? I'm going to do that. Because that's, that's good. And then I'll just put Vol Molten Shell on my left click, so if I need it, it'll just activate. And if I get stunned, it'll just activate Molten Shell then. Okay, and then I'm going to act increase duration, because I want that to affect my Molten Shell. Uh, it does affect the Vol Molten Shell too. That's... By the way, you can hover over, uh, over the areas and you can see exactly what is affected by which gems. Like for example, there's a Flame Dash, Flash of Casting and Flammability here. You can see that Flame Dash is, is affected by Faster Casting and Flammability are affected by Faster Casting. And I find I really like to have ca cast speed on Curses generally, because I self-cast, otherwise I find it annoying. Also, I'm going to go back and rename this, seeing as we're not doing Righteous Fire. Okay, so we have our totems here. We have our ignite brand to ignite and ignite and burn, and also proliferate the burn. We have nothing for buffs. Our auras are set up. We have a cast one stunned now, which is good. I would often times put a frost shield in here, but we only have 400 energy shield, and frost shield eats energy shield. Uh, I'm not putting steel skin in because it would conflict with molten shell. I could add another curse, but I need more curse effect, or I need another additional curse to be able to add another curse, like additional curse in the passive tree. There's also things like Withering Step and Face Run that are really nice too, to just have activated. I think Withering Step is considered a guard skill. No, it's it overlaps with movement skills, right? The only thing I don't like about Withering Step is that it gets erased oftentimes. Uh, just like when you're using it, just you just lose it immediately. Because like you, you don't realize it's going to happen and then you cast something and just it's immediately gone. So that's usually when I use it on cast when stunned. Also, it it affects your travel skills because it's also a travel skill, so it it puts them on cooldown, which is really obnoxious. I guess the other option is face run. I don't have any any frenzy charges for it, to eat, thankfully. Wait, do I have? I don't have power charges set up. That. Uh. Okay, so I can have phase run. Oh, that raises my dexter that raises my dexter requirement at 130. No, thank you. <laughs> Fuck that. I have a green gem somewhere, don't I? Something's requiring evasion. What 
but requires evasion. What weird thing did I do? Oh wait, I can just check this easily. So if you go under attributes, you can see exactly what causes it. Cast one stun requires dex. Okay. I didn't know that. It's a very small amount of dex, so it shouldn't be a problem, but it's just really weird. Well, I'm going to grab an amulet. Speaking of dex. I want some strength in dex, so I'm going to grab a citrine. I do not need extra. Oh, okay, that's not enough. That, yeah, okay, so that's enough. Okay, so between a max rolled implicit on a citrine, which is just a few blessed orbs, that's easy to get, and my base, I should have enough dex. I'm going to add some basic life. I need to add some distances, fire, gold. Lightning. Okay. I still need rings and gloves. Actually, I guess what I should be doing is I should be checking to see if there's any jewelry that would give me like a huge damage bonus or anything. Okay, well, I know Arn's Anguish is going to give me a damage bonus, but that's from the Maven, and also... I would lose my endurance charges doing that. Scary. Zoff's heart would be really good, but it requires Zoff, which is not good. Oh, Marlene's Fantasy gives me a huge amount of Grit Multi and Culling Strike. Ash of the Stars doesn't exist. Crystallized Omnis Omniscience doesn't exist. Gluttony I sucks. Soft's blood does might as well not exist. Magnet's expensive. Stone of Lazoir. Oh, that's the crappy one. Timepiece. It's true. Well, Marlene's Fallacy is actually a really easy gem to get, so. Or a really easy uh, amulet to get, so that actually would work pretty well. I will have to get my deck some other way, but it does give a lot of damage. It's hard to avoid. Hard to avoid that. Like, that's that's a supremely large amount of damage. And we'll add a quick anoint to this. Surveillance. Ah, uh, from way the fuck down the tree. That brings me up to 1.3 mil, which is... That's acceptable. So, gloves. Actually, I should look at... Two. Fire damage. Spell damage. Anathe oh, Anathema. I love Anathema. I use it in so many builds. Not this build, though. I don't have its its bow with me. Uh, Vixen's Entrapment. So I don't want to use it. I'm prob oh the barracks pass. Sorry about that one. I never remember which barracks is the uh expensive one. There's pass, respite, and something else. Pass, respite, and grip. Shocks all nearby enemies and killing a shock gen Okay. It's respite, because I remember it's the orange and red one, which is fire and lightning. Thankfully, that is not the ideal one for me. 
Yeah. Armor while frozen. Kind of cool. Does give me increased fire damage, though, so... Oh, and also, okay, so really, really important thing here. If you do not have any damage of a particular type, you cannot, uh, elemental, the elemental type, you can't apply the corresponding ailment. But if you have even one point of that type, so in here, I just added 23 to 40 cold damage. That's not much of cold damage. But, if I go under calc here... I now have a 56% chance to freeze because I added that. If I take that off, so 56% chance, chance to freeze here. If I take that off right now, go back, the chance to freeze is gone. And the chance to chill is gone too. Because even the smallest amount of extra damage of a particular elemental type will give you a lot. It will be a big boon. That's worth keeping in mind. Okay, so I need to actually grab some, something that's not unique. Okay, so I need a I need a ring and I need gloves. I'm gonna pick up some. Not too far. I'm going to pick up some armor and ES gloves. Just because it'll be easier to get uh, red and blue on a red-blue base. Get red and blue on a red base. Okay. Now overcapped on cold, good. I just need a ring to finish off my resistances. Actually, no, here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this lightning here. I'm going to add chaos. Tank my resistances a little bit. Then I'm going to go to ring specifically. Diamond ring. And I'm going to add uh, old lightning and chaos. Okay, and that now brings me up to I'm now now capped myself out for a resistance. Okay, that's ideal. Uh, I still... Oh, I have 3,900 life? Wow. When did that happen? <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to add a bit more life. Uh, things. And there's already some life on here. And the tower shield already has life on it. Well, it's chaos res of its own. So I'm going to be getting uh, from Soul Mantle. I'm going to be getting random hexes when my totems die, which means that I'm going to switch to Soul of Yugul, which reduces curse effect by thirty percent. And if I can work it in, I'm also going to grab Asylum here, which gives me another thirty percent reduced curse effect and also. 30 uh, Chaos Res. And with that selected, it is now reasonable for me to check. Not. Nope, still doesn't work. Never mind. Forgot I said anything. Uh, hmm. Wait, no, that does make sense. Okay, so I grab one point here, and I can get rid of both these points. Now. Okay, that's better. I can actually go right here instead of going up here now. That does force me to take that particular. 
or extra small life, but I mean, I'm going to take it anyway, so there. Okay, my armor is still at 66%, which is not very high at all. I don't really like that. Oh, I need glancing blows, I forgot. I need glancing blows because uh, I'm going to be using... Uh, uh, I was going to use uh, shock attackers for four seconds on block, but actually, if I'm going to be able to freeze and shock with my brand, freeze shock and ignite with my brand, and I can still freeze and shock with my flame surge, then maybe I don't need to have it shock. I don't actually need to worry about my block chance much. Okay, I'll cut that then. Uh, can I afford this? I want to get Sanctum of Thought for the reduced extra damage from crits, because I feel like that's a really important stat that a lot of people neglect. Okay. A lot of people neglect it, and it's it's really, really valuable. Okay, so this is 288 life for 5 points and 7, per, seven physical damage reduction. This is the same thing, except for it gives a little bit more life regen, a little bit more mana regen, and not give armor. But I want to increase my armor, not decrease it. Okay, other idea. This, yeah, this, okay, so this adds armor here. That is less for four points. Not, not ideal, it's not enough to count it. What is the best way to get armor life here? Because I don't, I like, I like 4,000 life, that's a good number. Actually, I'm going to move this regen node, or that fire node, to up here. Second. Is this worth having? This is not giving me anything? Oh, because it's fire dot multi, and I'm not using fire dot multi anymore. Right, 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 right. Okay. Right, I'm going to move that life mastery over to here. So this is giving 446 life for 7 points. And also giving me a bunch of strength that I do need to be mindful of that. But I can get strength on my shield, too. That is the other option. Because I don't need that anymore. Strength. I'll just grab 40 strength. That's a reasonable amount to expect. Oh, I still haven't figured out my decks. So I have to fix that. Because I'll pick an agility for now. I will I will change that out though. And actually, I forgot another thing. I do want to add elemental resistances cannot be lowered by curses. I think this is one of the most important protection masteries that exists, and I take it on every single build. Just because it's just that good. So going back to this, 7 points for 450. This is 3 points for 250. Where else can I get life? Three hundred life for five. All this is about measuring the points that you have and trying to like meter out what's the most efficient way to do things.
Armor all supplies to 10% armor all supplies to chaos damage from hits. I'm gonna grab that. That's very valuable. <laughs> I'm just trying to find like another way to get myself more life uh in exchange for this because this now has this is seven points for 450 life which is not good that is a very bad trade-off Here's the next question. If I pick this, which is 250, so those seven points, I could pick this for the 250, and then I could get 2% physical damage reduction, or I could get 3% physical damage reduction for two of the points, but also more. I like this one. I like Sanctity better. I'll clear that. I did lose 100 health. But I went up some physical damage reduction. And also, more importantly, I went down three points. Because 94 is not realistic. I try to cap all my builds at nine, level 90, so 113 points. Just because I've con I generally consider uh, level 90 to be the level that I can achieve given enough time on practically any character, even characters that aren't very effective. Okay. Under so now this is the point where I start deciding how much I get per point uh, for all the stats I've allocated, so that I can measure what is the most efficient way to do things. This is four points for 185, right there. That's. 46,000 damage per point. And then if we do this other one, which gives me a bunch of ignite stuff, which is good, that's 49,000 for four points as well. Okay, that's really bad by comparison, because as opposed, this is 46,000 per point, this is 12,000 per point. So usually I would not, I would generally not do this. Do I need the ignite chance is the question though. So my ignite chance is currently at a hundred percent. A little bit over a hundred, I think. So I'm going to axe these. And you can still get the mastery since this is part of the area. And that brings me down to 96% ignite. That's as far as I'm concerned, 96 is the same as a hundred. Like, you're going to get it often enough that you can consider that good. Okay, so axed those, which really weren't worth it. This is 148 for four points, which is good because this also gives you mana regen. And also, it does give you another minimum power charge, of which I have here as well. So I have five minimum power charges now. This is 174 for four. What other options do I have? That's 83 for 4, so not worth it. Shield stuff. Arcane Surge. 55 for 3, which is not... 55,000 for 3 is not good. Not enough to be worth it. I don't know, 17 for 2. Nope. Uh, this is 62,000 for two points, so that's 31,000 each, which is still pretty decent. Uh, this one's a little bit over that. And this one is not as good, but it also has a bunch of totem placement speed and a totem mastery, which kind of makes the damage count a bit fucky. Uh, then we have 250 life regen here, which is just frankly amazing. I would prefer to keep that. 
I do have a life node here. Only 4%, which is amazing, but I don't have any other life nodes to switch it to, so that should stay there. Then I have armor here. That's doing pretty well. It's 220, 266 life per, or per, for three. Actually, no, it's five here. 288 and 5% physical damage. Five, which is... But I don't really have another good thing to replace it with. Nothing, there's nothing easily, easily accessible that I can replace that with. How much is this? So this is five right here, which is 200, or it's 290 life. And 220 mana. Plus 70,000, yes. So that was, how much mana, how much life was that? That was 300 life. Five. This is 290 life for five. This gives five percent. This gives 3,200 armor, which is five percent physical damage reduction. But this gives more. This gives the same amount of life regen, a bit more mana, a lot more light or mana regen, and also gives damage. Nope. I'm going to stick with the armor. I think the armor is probably better in this scenario. There's also this over here. $131,000 for four. That's $32,000 per four. That's actually a real there. If I find something that's worse than that. Hundred and fifteen thousand for three, that's really good. This one thirty five thousand per each of these. I think I'm actually gonna pick totem life in this scenario, which will decrease my damage, but it'll increase my totem life, so that's valuable. Uh Would increase my aura effect, which would give me twenty four thousand damage, which is uh, twenty five thousand. So that's a little bit under what I would prefer per point, but it does give two two percent physical damage reduction as well, which is pretty good for one single point. So I am going to pick that one up because yeah, this is only this is two points. That's only three percent physical reduction. Which yeah. I forgot to check this. Ooh, this is 92,000 for a single point. That's really good. That I am definitely picking. One twenty-eight for three. 68, that's 43. Okay, that's decent. Enough to count. Don't count. Anything else I can cut? I should probably cut... I mean, I need to cut the agility somehow. I don't like having stats like that just hang out. Can you naturally get decks? Wait. The best where's the best place to get this? Uh it already has my strength on it. That's not really good for it. I could trade some chaos res out here. X. That's fair. Yeah, I like that. Okay, that brings me to 114,000. Or, sorry. Try that again. 114 points, which is 91. Which is acceptable. I'm also going to permanently be at maximum 
frenzy or endurance and power charges. So I can make myself immune to ignite or shock. And I don't think things can steal my charges anyways because I have minimum charges, which are different than normal charges. I think you have to take a charge away from me to be able to get for them to be able to get it. Otherwise, minimum charges are just infinite charges for the enemy. Which I hope is not true. Next question. There is one other thing that I could swap, and this this is probably not going to work. So Malachi's loop tends to be really good in general. Uh, two extra power charges, gain a power charge on hit, spell damage per power charge. Uh, Malachi's loop is pretty common, so it shouldn't be too hard to get. I would, however, be sacrificing one totem for it, so that's a big deal if I were to do this. Also, the other problem is that the plus two maximum power charges aren't going to be useful because. If I gain, I like, I gain one charge, okay, I can use that, but the second I gain the second charge, I'm going to lose those two charges, and then I'm going to get shocked, which isn't amazing. Uh, I could unselect this. What am I at? I'm at... I'm at 1.4 million right now. I'm going to cut off that section right there, and I'm going to swap on Malachi's loop, which is going to give me two power charges, bringing me up to, it's going to expect me to have six. I don't have six. I'm going to have five, because the sixth is just away every sec, every month, basically, and I lose a totem, which is, I mean, I lose 200,000 DPS there. That's not worth it. I wanted to try it, though, just because... It's an option. Okay, well, back there. Okay, well, it is at 1.4, which is pretty damn good, I gotta say. I don't know if I need any more than that right now. Because, I mean, I'm not going to have a chance to, like, get stupid strong or anything during this event. I just do not have the time. Oh, reduced extra damage from crits. Yes. Pass queen. Actually, I'm going to axe this because it's as valuable as that, and I want to. And because I want to keep my points down. I'm sorry, my headset keeps turning off. I have absolutely no idea why, because it has charged way more than enough today. I think its battery is just dying. Which is frustrating and unfortunate. Oh, there is actually some one other thing I wanted to look at. So Torchoke Step. So you reflect 100% of their max, of the totem's maximum life at, at uh, as fire damage to the enemies that are hit. How much totem life? What? What life your totems that can be taken before yours used by totem master? Oh, so that's... Oh, okay. I understand why it's asking for that now. Uh, I'm only going to have one brand active, I think. Uh, things are going to be ignited now. Oh, that'll actually increase damage. Things are going to be shocked now.
Crush. A nerve and covered in ash would both if I get them. I don't have any flasks right now, so that too. Okay, so totem life. I don't know how to check that. Yes, I do. Path of Bill or Path of Excel Wiki. Totem life. Oh. That's not what I'm looking for. Totem. Active totem range, totem. Range, act totem limit, skills use, totem stats. Skills cast by the totems are affected by all modifiers affecting a player. The stats of the totem itself are not. Okay. Totems have a standard 40% elemental resistance and 20% chaos resistance. Totems also take 80% less damage from enemies, but take full damage from themselves, aka EG Forbidden Right. That doesn't tell me what their life is, though. Okay. What is it playing? No. That is not Evertones anymore. Okay. Wait, it's suggesting that the totem that totem life is shown in Path of Building. Why would it ask for it? Oh, totem life, thirty-one hundred. Okay. Okay, so 3,100. We're at the effective hit pool. Very small amount. Okay, well, I'll leave it at 3,000 just because, I don't know, it's better to be to under-assume than over. Okay. Next order of business would be to double check my gems now, because it has been a while since I looked at any of my gems here, and I want to actually make sure that they are now good gems. Uh, first of all, level 21 is pretty easy to get. Wow. That is a 100,000 DPS difference. But now its mana cost is obscene. Oh, well, that's fine. In a second. Oh, 10% chance to scorch enemies. Oh, I would want that if I if I could get anomalous. But I don't trust that they can. Not in a temporary loop. Okay, so what other things are there that I could be... Elemental focus, but that would mean I can't freeze or shock with my flame. Sad. Increased critical strikes, duration, cruelty. So I'm just adding a shit ton of gems here, and I'm going to basically the way that I do this is ignoring them all with totem support, 
I am going to remove gems one at a time, whatever is the the least effective gem that I have. 1.1 mil, 1 mil, 948. Okay, these 750 and 776, so these are both not worth it. So, to cut two more gems. 761, 686, 629, 9. Uh, this is about on par with Fire Pen, so I'm going to keep it because this reduces my this reduces my mana cost by 31, which is okay. Again. 582, 524, 579, 496, 453. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the strike. Right. Also, I'm going to re add Fire Pen. Unselect. Okay, so now I have this set up. So the increased. Okay, Fire Pen would be better than. But the difference is, so the 62 mana cost versus 107. That's just incomparable. I would rather have 62. Uh, usually at this point, I would go over the different options for like divergent, etc. But there's not really a point because I don't expect to be able to realistically get them. Like, I would love to have either a Divergent or an Anomalous. That'd be great, but I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't plan for that with, uh, in a temporary league. It's just not worth it. So, five now. Okay, so I'm at 1.5 million now with Culling Strike. 1.5 million with Culling Strike, 44% chance to freeze, 44% chance to shock with my Flame Surge totems. I have a 96% chance to ignite with uh, my brand and a 56% chance to freeze and shock. My brands I can just pop on and they'll be fine. I don't have to have the totems stay up, which is great because they won't last. Okay, so I will have the combustion debuff on enemies, so that will I will get a bit of a bonus there. It will proliferate, and this isn't just ignites proliferating either. This is freezes and shocks prol proliferating as well. Which is really nice because if I can just proliferate a freeze through an entire pack of porcupines, for example, nice. Okay, I'm very happy with this. Except for I have nothing in the buffs. Well, I can fill that out later. So, the Flame Surge totems with Grand Totem for Ailment. Cool. Now, I just hope that all these are reasonable things to get. I know Barracks Pass will be reasonable, and Marilene's. Mer Marilene's Fallacy will be easy to get. Torchoke Step will be easy to get. I think Herimner's Resolve will be easy as well. Singularity tends to cost a little bit of money, but it'll be worth it. And then there's Soul Mantle, which I don't really know how well that's going to be to get that, but I will have to see. Worst comes to worst, without Soul Mantle, I have... I'd have to remove one.
So if I swapped out faster casting and took Bell Totem, I'd still be at 1.1. So I'll still be fine, even if I don't have the... Uh, even if I don't have a Soul Mantle. I can just replace it with something else. Fine. And then one last check on full DPS for just everything. Is there anything else that it just suddenly will now be more valuable? Let's find out. Okay, quarter staff, no. Rapid's globe, uh, sacrifices life, no. Divinarius, impossible to get. Arn's anguish is gonna be really hard to get. Singularity I already have. Alkai's loop, not worth it. Oh, I don't have any even any flasks yet. I forgot about that. Cerberus's set limb is not better than Singularity, and it's not like like these things say that they're bet they're like oh this is uh 500,000 DPS better than the Spirit Shield. That's not true because one of some the DPS that it's not able to calculate is that it's giving me one of my totems. So if I take off a totem, I lose three hundred thousand, two hundred fifty thousand. That's a fair bit to lose. Actually, that might. If it's at, it would need to be at least 300,000 different. And I'm starting to not trust Singularity because you need to be close enough to hinder things. I have to, you have to make sure you're close enough. And I don't know if I'll necessarily always be close enough. That is an issue. So things like Cerberus's limb. Oh god, that's from a Delve boss. Fuck that. <laughs> Polaric devastation would be really. It, it is worth keeping in mind that there is a whole bunch of other shit that you can add to this build that would make it better if this was a permanent leak. Really have to note that because like I could add a helmet enchantment to this if this was a permanent leak, and I get reservation efficiency on things. I could get... what else? The Flame Surge. I could get 80,000 for Flame Surge, damage, 100,000 for crit strike chance, 120,000 extra damage from... about well, this damage. Some ability curse effect. Much. Point stands that I could add a lot more damage there. I could add... Uh, where is it? I could add uh, penetrates, enemy re element resistances if you haven't killed recently. I could add uh, commandment of light, wherever it is, when you take critical strike, which drops consecrated ground, which is really good. I could actually like take the time to get like a martyr of innocence or ender swallow. There are things that would that would be different if if this was in a permanent league. So that that is worth noting. Like oh, also legacy of fury, which would be really nice if it could kill Maven, but I don't trust that they're going to be able to kill Maven in time to tell those. So if they do, Legacy of Fury would be a nice upgrade to Torchoke Step. Okay, so final thing is to add Blasks. Flask, yay! Assault Flask, we add 
3200 armor. Usually the percent ones are worse than the flat ones. Granite flask, I add 4500 armor. That's probably what I want. Top a granite flask. Pop increased armor on it. Last charge is when you crit. Cool. I'm also going to grab a Jade Flask, which is for evasion rating. Uh, that's usually not... Oh, that's only 9%. Oh, actually, that's not enough. I was expecting that to be a little bit higher. If if we were getting more uh, evasion rating from that, I would pick a Jade Flask just as like an extra level of defense, but it's not worth it. I might add Quartz so that we have Phasing, which is really good. There's also Amethyst, which would help a lot since our Chaos Res is low. Because we're probably not going to get as much Chaos Res as we hope to get, so that'd be considered. I will grab a Diamond Flask while I'm here. Add uh, Cast Speed, brings it up to 204,000. If I add... Strike chance. I critical strike chance. It's 164, so cast speed's better. Add doctors for last charge on strike. Get a very unique enemy. And final flask. Final flask is probably going to be variable between. Quartz, Amethyst, and Quicksilver, realistically. A lot of Quicksilver that just uh, activates on charges being full. Doctor. And I'll give it what would work. I guess I'll just give it movements. Not. Okay, that's 50%. There. I could add a uh, Basalt Flask, but we're already 85% physical damage reduction, and as soon as we turn on... Was Molten Chill on? Oh shoot, Molten Chill's on. Don't want to count that. we add a Basalt Flask. That. Four percent. That's not. Yeah. So the quicksilver is going to be a mix of either a quicksilver, an amethyst flask, or a basalt flask, probably. So that'll be variable. Let's see. This will be used. Charges are full. Okay, so that is how you make a build from start to finish. That took nearly three hours to do, which honestly isn't that long for making an entire build. <laughs> but we're sitting here with 1.5 million now. 82% physical damage reduction, 23% block chance, max resist, 26% chaos res... Uh, good mana regen, over 600 life regen a second, 4,000 life. What else? My movement speed is very low at 19%. Absolute ass, to be honest. I might replace Torchoke's step, honestly, just to get better movement speed, because 25% is awful. Because it's being cut down by 6 to 19. At least with a Quicksilver, I have 69%. Nice. But, like, that's not... That's not going to be on all the time, either. I really wish they would just give us a toggle where we can just have our flasks automated or not, depending on our preference. I really do, because I feel like that would just make the game better. Straight up. Also... During, 
because we, as always, we only have a little bit of mana. And I'm going to add Hinder to a, a Hinder Aura to our flat. Wait, no, the Hinder Aura is the same size as Singularity's Hinder Aura. That's not what. I'll add reduced mana cost, sure. Add. Play Flasks, Corrupting Blood. Uh, I don't think I'm going to need that because I am a physical damage build. So that'll decrease the damage bleed does by a lot. Ignite's probably the most dangerous to me. Either Ignite or Poison. You know what? I'm going to grab Ignite. Ignite Immunity. Doctor's Flask. And I'm also going to throw on the not be shocked at maximum power charges because shock gives a pretty big damage boost to the enemy and I don't want to deal with that. Very big dangerous. Oh, mental rapidity is 150 is 50,000 per point. That's really good. Is forty thousand for all forty thousand per I don't know if I need the totem placement speed. Probably do though. Okay, so I also have I should I forgot to mention this. I have uh sixty percent uh reduced extra damage from critical strikes between the critical strike mastery and the Sanctum of Thought, plus I also have a reduction to chaos damage to the armor and energy shield mastery. Plus my children take a bit of my damage. I have a ton of life regen. What else? Oh I have I have the Flask Master, and I don't think I actually need this anymore, because that was mainly for the Writhing Jar, which we're not using. Okay. Okay, so in that case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop off that, and I'm going to add Mental Rapidity, which will bring us up to uh, 1.58 million. And we're still one point under 90, so we can add something else if we want. Cast speed for different non instant value you've cast recently. Really, like the caster masteries are all like really ass. <laughs> to be honest, they, they just seem really crappy. Going over anything else. I can re grab the uh, increased effect, which gives me 2% more physical damage reduction and 30,000 damage. I'll grab that, sure. That's worth it. Brings up to 72% physical damage reduction, and I still have 23 block, too. Okay. So, this is what the. Uh, Three looks like for now. Obviously, there's going to be some working on it over time, but this is the uh, full build. It's at 1.6 million. It culls. It has it has a whole ton of different layers of defense: energy shield, armor, block chance, uh, crit protection, curse protection, uh, decent chaos res. Uh, Damage sharing between uh, totems. I can even add taunt to the totems as well to make me even harder to find. Thought. Do I already have, do I already have taunt somewhere? No. But you could add taunt. Oh, well, I can't do that. 
And life regen. Okay, so that's pretty cool. I think that's that's going to be good. And I think that's where we're going to call it here today. Or at least working on the build. So here's the plan. I want to do just... Just so that y'all actually see like a little bit of gameplay today. I am going to do one map on... Oh, I'm still logged into this. I'm going to do one map on my... Uh, on, uh, oh, not that. My, uh, raider. My smite raider. That's what I'm trying to say. Just because it's really quite something to witness her. Like, I've spent a bunch of time in events now, and I've been running slow characters, so I'm not used to the fact that I have nearly 300% movement speed. Like, even in town, this is how fast I am. It's ridiculous. Ah, and there I go again. <laughs> That's with no rage. So let's go smash something. I like smashing things. Okay. A 40% delirious, extra strong box, arachnid uh, nest map. Give me some Shaper Scarabs. I will add a Polished Breach Scarab. And... would be a good option. I'll add an Einhar. No, actually, I can add that normally. I'll add a Harbinger. Okay, we're going to use Eater of Worlds, Fortune Favors the Bold, uh, and Einhar. Like, who wants to see me run really fast? <laughs> okay. Oh. Oh my gosh, as soon as I did that, my encoder started freaking out. It's like, encoder overloaded! <laughs> <laughs> Which basically means that the video isn't going to look amazing uh, at this one, this particular moment. You gonna stop overloading? Okay, I think it's gotten used to it now. Whoa. Okay, that was it overloading right there. Yeah, unfortunately... Ooh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it really would help if I can see what's happening. That would be, like, really nice. I might not even be able to uh, play... I might even be able to use her right now with a Delirious map while streaming. Can I turn down... I just turn something down to make this more visible? I have everything pretty damn low now. Right. Engine mold threading, dynamic calling. Wow. This is just like my game is on minimum settings and it is just freaking out trying to manage it. Okay, that off. Disable that. Okay, right, change it up. Okay, this is as optimized as I can get it right now, probably. Okay, please, please let me be able to actually play without it freaking out. Okay, that's a bit smoother. By Omni. You might not get to see me run really fast if it just keeps freaking out, but... This is going pretty well, generally.
Whoa, Slang just hit me hard. The game is trying so hard survive the, to survive. My computer is trying so hard to survive this. My graphics card does not like what I am doing to it right now. It's very upset with me. Whoa! Oh, there's a Kosis there. That's not making anything harder. Uh, yeah, you can suppress spell damage. I don't do spell damage. That's fine. Being drops extra basic currency. I like. I don't like the fact that Kosis is still here. On. You can see him just barely on the mini-map. Let me go get my smuggler's cache. Well, I hope I did Joseph proud. I I took the fight to my graphics card, and I my graphics card is losing now. <laughs> That's something he would always say in his videos, is like... And now we take the fight to our graphics. And then the server. Or something to those lines. Come over here. Stay away from Kosis. Really want to deal with him. Not yet. Wow! It's choppy even for me. Man, it is struggling so much. Oh, Kos has found me. Really need to be able to see where he is, otherwise I'm in horrible danger. Where did he go? Over here. Okay, he's dead now. That looks like a Rex. That wasn't a Rex, was it? No, it wasn't. The, uh... One is it? The Sackwine Rex is uh, the one that spawns, uh, that, that lets you go into uh, the Beastary Boss's headquarters, and it looked like the Sackwine Rex. Because if you think about it, Sackwill is literally just a chicken. He can't even fly. Is this even, like, a good stream? Like, b just being able to see? Like, are you even able to see what's going on in this map? With what I'm doing? Because if you genuinely can't see, then there's no point me doing this. <laughs>
Okay, we're going to finish up this map, and uh, then we're going to call it quits for the stream. We've already been going for three hours, which is pretty long. Yeah, it's actually gotten choppy for me at times, as well. It's pretty bad. Unfortunately, I don't think my graphics card is, able, is capable of handling streaming, recording, and this at the same time. It just isn't. Just too much going on for it. All I can do is try to clear out this area as best I can. Or I add anything else to it. But I'd love to go, like, hit the uh, ritual and stuff, but I also want to be able to still see. More importantly, I want y'all to be able to see. Oh no, Ice Nova. Heal Precinct. Oh, those are Storm Seekers. Don't want those. I really wish I had enough money for a new graphics card. It needs it. It's time. Unfortunately, that's like... It's just like such an obscenely large amount of money to put towards anything at the moment. That's okay. One day I'll have enough money for it. That will be awesome. We'll have to celebrate or something. I have a new graphics card. Okay. Up to nine layers of delirium now. Okay. It might be better on the stream than it is on the recording, because the recording is like suffering a bit right now. Did I kill the boss? No. There we go. Cool, an Alhazim. Or Alhazman, if you want to pronounce it. Okay, ten layers of delirium. Breach! Oh, a tool hand. Nice. Man, tool, I want to see you in concert. Tool and the Breach Lords. That sounds like the perfect band name. Oh, comprehensive scouting report. Nice. Kind of rare. That uh, strong box go. I was just looking. Here it is. Elk. Thankfully, I can't be frozen. There was being mean. Don't. I think there's really much left to kill, but I am, like, on the verge of 11. Oh, I just realized all the f the fire that's exploding around me... Oh, it was exploding around me. was actually, like, a, a modifier I stole. 
not just like an enemy thing. I was like, what enemy's doing that? <laughs> I don't think I'm going to find enough enemies to get to 11. Okay, line. It's very fun just bouncing around with her. <laughs> uh, fun after like doing a ton of path and building stuff. <laughs> Any case, though, it's about time we call the stream. It has been a while. There's only one of you left. I know it's just you, Pyro. Thank you for staying. Oh. Battle of the Bands, Breach for Harbinger, featuring Tull and the Breach Lords and the Beachheads. I love that! Oh my gosh, the Beachheads, that's a Harbinger-themed thing. And there's art, there's like five or six Harbinger items that all, like, create unique-looking Harbingers, too. So they're all, like, the special band members, and they all have, like, their own purpose. Oh, that's so great. Okay, so, thank you for everyone who is here and has been here. I appreciate it. It makes streaming as good as it is. I have some more Crangled stuff coming out this week. Uh, reminder, the Thursday stream is not happening. It is moved to Friday. It will be 30 minutes earlier because that is the start of the Shifting Stones event. There will be a few videos that come out before that, and hopefully they will be... Hopefully, one of those videos will be the build video I did today, going over uh, the build that I just made, because I want to use that in Shifting Stones, and, well, we'll see if some other people want to use it, too. Thank you again all for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope you all have a great night. Aw, you're welcome. You're so sweet. <laughs>